that to me. Have to be dealt with. There we go. Oh, you're gonna give me Mary, a water. Because he offered to bring the other one down, and I think okay. he got distracted. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm a I know. <laughs> Nagging is in job description. Ready, staff? Yeah. Josh? Yes. Okay. Good. I saw it. All right. Awesome. Good. I'm not going to say anything. Um, <laughs> we'll call the meeting to order for Thursday, June 14th of the Capitola City Council. May I have a roll call, please? Council Member Harlan? Here. Council Member Bertrand? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Councilmember Botworth? Here. Mayor Termini? Here. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. City Attorney, may I have a report on closed session? Good evening, Mayor Tremini, members of the City Council. There were three items on this evening's closed session. First item was a conference with labor negotiation, a uh, conference with labor negotiator. Council received a report from and gave directions to its labor negotiator uh, with respect to all uh, bargaining groups and unrepresented employees. Second item was a uh, matter of pending litigation. The case is Water Rock Construction Inc. versus City of Capitola and related cross action. Lastly, there was a uh, public employee performance evaluation involving yours truly. There was no reportable action. Thank you. Are there any additions to the agenda? Staff has no changes. Madam City Clerk. Uh, we uh, received additional materials for item 9A, which is on your desk as well as in the dais that was a late arrival, one public comment. Um, for 9C, we got five public comments. And for 9E, we had an additional attachment, a track change version of the proposed ordinance. Excellent, thank you. This is a time for public comments for items that are not on this evening's agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on any item that is not on this evening's agenda? Come on up, Dan. How's going? Yeah, Welcome. Yeah. Uh, Dan Finkel, how's it going? Good. Um, I was curious that we've had a few races lately, and uh, there's been some road closures. Um, blue gum, in particular. Yeah, when Stockton and Blue Gum are closed, I can't get home. So I was curious if that could be um, worked out somehow. Uh, Steve, maybe you can come up and talk to us because I've noticed as well road closures for things happening that I can't quite tell what's happening. Good evening. I'll have to be honest, research what's going on on Blue Gum. Um, yes. I, I'm not aware of what those closures were for. I know AT&T has been around town doing a lot of uh, pulling fiber optics around, um, but I'd be happy to uh, do some research and, and get back to you guys on that. Yeah, maybe that maybe we have we have is two separate utility contractors, not yeah. realizing the other one's working. We, we try real hard through our through our um, encroachment permits to coordinate that, yeah. um, but uh, I, I'll I'll be happy to look into it. Thank you. I'll try not to let that happen, Dan. Should we just if all else fails, you can spend the night at my house. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is Leila Bratovic, and uh, I just came up here to introduce myself. My, uh, I'm a new executive director for the Conflict Resolution Center for oh. Santa Cruz County. Yes. And uh, I just want to thank you for the City of Capitola's continued engagement and, uh, and involvement with uh, CRC and supporting our, our efforts to mediate conflicts through dialogue and mediation. So uh, I look forward to working with you in the future. And uh, thank you very much. We've served um, hundreds of people also in uh, or cases in uh, for the city of Capitola as well, from neighbor disputes to business to uh, restorative justice cases, parent teen mediations, and so forth. And we're really looking forward to continuing to do so. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Anyone else? Then we'll move on to city council treasurer and staff comments. Staff, do you have any comments tonight? 
our community development director has an announcement. Aha. Hi, Katie. Hi, good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, we Today we received news from FEMA that we have uh, been granted a, a grant for the local hazard mitigation plan update. So um, in the amount of $41,438. So we look forward to working with Kimley Horn on this project and moving forward and updating our LHMP. So Wonderful. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Wow. Revenue. Mr. Treasurer. Most interesting invoice of the month. $2,645.51 for doggy waste bags. Biodegradable, I'm sure they're worth every penny. Given the alternative, I'm sure they are. Council. No comments. Nope, Stephanie. We, did we canceled next week's meeting. We had it down on our yes, calendar, yes. so that's canceled. Okay, that's all. Okay, well, that's good to know. Doc, you're good? Yeah. I have a couple of announcements. First of all, um, we had a car show last weekend. Kudos to the chief and the Capital Safety Foundation. It was great. It went off without a hitch. Uh, everyone was happy. The cars were beautiful. And the foundation made lots of money to give back to needy organizations. Um, we had a concert last night, well attended. It's our second concert of the year, and what made it significant for me was that the mayor of Santa Cruz attended our, counts, our oh. concert. Nice. And he came up to me at the end of it and said, why can't Santa Cruz have something this nice? <laughs> <laughs> and he had a little tear in his eye. <laughs> so uh, Mayor Terrazas was very pleased with what we did yeah. and with the uh, tenor of the crowd, and everyone was happy, and yeah. it was a non-political sort of a thing which he seems to have everything to do with that. Um, I want to, I asked Steve before this meeting regarding quiet signs, quiet zone signs for the uh, hill going up Monterey. It was one of the solutions the chief came up with. Evidently, he has located the signs, he has them, and they will be going up. Um, and we think that they'll make a big difference in the, the noise going up that hill because between climbing the hill and the exhaust pipes of various vehicles, it can be pretty noisy for residents. I want to uh, point out the valor and stamina of two of our council members. They were in an RTC meeting today from nine o'clock in the morning till four o'clock this afternoon, went home and came here. Thank you, Ed, thank you, Jacques. You're a better man than I. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. We will move on to boards, commissions, and committee appointments. We have a, a recommendation to make an appointment to the Historical Museum Board. Yes, um, as set out in bylaws, first these um, applicants are interviewed by the Museum Board and the recommendation comes forward. Uh, two of the applicants are re-upping, so we have um, David and Pamela Greninger, or sorry, David Payton and Pamela Greninger, who are up for another three-year term, and we have a new applicant, um, Rebecca Hobson, um, who is being recommended for um, an unfinished term that will end next year. Got it. What's the pleasure of the council? Oh, I'm all Your for it. Motion? Yeah. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're back on, Dave Payton. <laughs> Pam, <laughs> sorry. Hey, hey, hey. I got your number for you. <laughs> you want to make an announcement now? Yeah. Um, okay. It just reminded me. So, um, uh, Linda, you may be off the hook. RTC yes. bicycle. Yes, you know. I heard. You I'm heard. very excited. Okay, so um, uh, would you announce that? Because Elaborate, we've been please. working on this forever. Next meeting. Um, <laughs> since before I was um, chair, or I mean chair, oh, I've been. Uh, yeah, there you go. I promoted before myself. City clerk. We have been looking for a long time for a bicycle representative uh, through the RTC to represent us, and we have found. Uh, a suitable candidate who will, will be brought forth at the next meeting. So Fantastic. Uh, okay. This has been more than a year in the works, so Thank we're you. very pleased. Thank we'll you. move on to the consent calendar. Um, all of these items are taken with a single motion and vote, unless someone in the audience or someone on the council would like to pull an item. Seeing no one from the audience raising their hand, anyone from the council? Is there a motion? We'll move approval of the consent calendar. Second. So, there's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent calendar passes unanimously. We'll move on to general government public hearings. Receive report on construction bids received for the Capitola Library Project. Receive report 
and provide, provide direction to staff. Steve. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, unfortunately, we uh, received bids uh, on the library project. Um, we re did receive three bids from the seven pre-qualified contractors. Um, the low bid was from auto construction in the amount of $12,325,000. This is approximately $2.3 million over our budgeted amount on this project and 23% over the estimate. Um, this is um, not unique to this project. There have been several projects that have bid uh, in the last month or so that are coming in staggeringly over the, uh, the estimates. Um, we're still trying to figure out how to move forward with this and make a recommendation to the council. At this point, we don't need any direction um, from council. We are going to be meeting with the group, uh, kind of get all, all hands on deck and try and do some value engineering at a meeting next week um, to see what kind of, uh, if there's opportunities to stay with the existing project and or the ex existing design, but value engineer some of the cost out, bring it down into something we could bring back as a recommendation. If we can't do that, we'll come back to you with other recommendations, rejecting the bid and how we think we should move forward. So we hope to have that recommendation for you at the uh, next council meeting. To be clear, Steve, um, so we're not being asked to award any contracts. We're not even being asked to commit in any way. We're just hearing that you're gonna meet with a low bidder and see if they can make um, value engineering alternates to the construction project to bring it into budget. Yeah, we're meeting with the, we're gonna talk to the contractor, we'll also have other party members in there, um, part of the design team uh, to help us identify the value engineering that we can do. Questions of Steve? Yeah. On the staff report, there was four recommendations, so you don't want us to weigh in on those. You wanna come back with, uh, with recommendations after you meet? Yeah, I okay. think we'll keep those four recommendations alive for right now. I, I realize some of them are gonna be tougher, but um, at this point, we're not asking for any direction okay. from the council. Okay. That's fine. Any other questions of Steve? Thank you, Steve. Um, then we'll open the public comment. Anyone who would like to comment on this? Um, the council is taking no action tonight, but you can still certainly give us your views. Greetings. Greetings, hi, I'm Jack TV. Um, I just wanna say that I think now isn't the best time to get a contractor. There are no contractors available and we have so many people who work so hard to accomplish this public good of a library. And sometimes you have to be patient. And I think, I think that's the comment I like to give. Let's just be patient on this library and maybe wait for a better day to build a library than right now when you can't get anyone to do anything, when you've got Silicon Valley screaming for contractors. But it seems like the economy, the interest rates are hiking, right? So how does the 18th month picture look? for contractors, a 24 month picture look. Maybe in 24 months, contractors won't be so in demand. And so maybe we should wait a little bit when the supply and demand comes out so we won't have to ask for a value. Maybe it'll be like it was five or six years ago when you could get contractors no problem. You could get several good bids. But right now, that's just not the case. And so I think if it's possible for us to wait on this project, maybe we should look at that. Thank you. Thank you. TJ. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I appreciate the opportunity to talk. Uh, it's no surprise that you see me here again because I came and spoke when the architect's bid was a couple million over budget. But um, you know, this brings into uh, this these these bids are just uh, it's, it's just astronomical out of the budget context for a library. And I, I'm a big supporter of the new library. I paid it through my property tax. You had over ten and a half million dollars, and and I think you could do a lot with that. Uh, uh, the money that was given to the uh, city through the property tax, yeah, but within reason. You know, um, interestingly enough, I brought just a show and tell for you. While the uh, audience can't see it, this house is a uh, it's a beautiful house that my wife and I designed. We spent eighty-five thousand dollars in design fees, uh, permit fees from the county. I actually had it approved to build. The reality was when we got done, we sat on. We're going, you know what? It's outside of our scope of our budget and. Uh, and what we're gonna be. So we end up scrapping this, and three, four years later, we built a much smaller house within our budget, and you know what? We're perfectly content. Uh, we get to meet our budget needs, and uh, I would hope the, sat the city would be just as responsible. 
you know, we were voted the uh, number one, one, one of the top 10 walking cities in, in the nation, or at least number six. Thanks, Council Member uh, Bottle, for that. Um, but yet, we still have the bluff closed because I'm uh, not sure what we're going to do. Don't want to put money towards it. Uh, we have the Espinal Park closed because of uh, unknowns what we're going to do. And those areas alone uh, would exceed, I would think, um, the amount of visits and tourism that um, a library that we're going to, uh, well, basically triple in size. So maybe we consider one that's twice as big as today's library and uh, keep it within budget and, and help us all out. And, and so we don't have the expense and we can pay back our PERS debt and our unfunded liabilities and that would make at least one member of the public happy. So thank you. Thanks, TJ. Welcome, Gail. Good evening. <clears throat> I want to second your thank you to our two council members who were in the RTC meeting all day today. That must have been pretty grueling. Uh, I'm here ta to talk about the library, and I, for once, I think I agree with TJ having to do with our library. Uh, I, I really think we can find a way to build this library knowing what we know now that the construction business today is is fraught with problems and so whatever size our library ends up whatever we have to reduce in order to get this library built now I think it's really important to get this library built now because contrary to another speaker I don't think it's ever going to get any cheaper to build uh, ever it never does and so there may be more contractors but it's never going to get cheaper because the materials are not going to get cheaper and in addition to that we also need to remember that we have a contract with the county to build this library now and we need to honor that contract so I'm hoping we move forward move forward quickly so that as tariffs and whatever else start you know coming into play we can get this library built as soon as possible thank you great thank you would anyone else like to address the council? Uh, I'd like to, to ask David Tanza, who's our construction manager. Can you come up? Because I know we're not taking any action tonight, but I think it's good for us to know, and I think we all feel the same very much like TJ, is that we want to take a path that will bring us within budget. And my question for you, David, is um, do you see a light at the end of the tunnel that we might be able to do some things that will give us maybe not the library that is on paper right now, but a library that is substantial and maybe not have some of the bells and whistles or engineering features that the one does that, that there's designed. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, that's a difficult question. And I only say that because the market is really um, uh, not very stable. Um, Atherton, they just had a library and civic center that came 40% came over budget. So it's not just Santa Cruz, it's sort of the Bay Area. We're feeling a lot of uh, uncertainty with tariffs, material costs, those things. Um, we do see some opportunities in the Capitol Library to, um, I think we can, we can bridge some of the gap without too much damage. You know, uh, we definitely don't want to affect the program for the librarians. We want to keep the library um, something the city's proud of. There's going to, there'll be um, some work to do to get sort of the last part of that. Mm -hmm. but. Um, working with the design team and the contractor, the low-bid contractor, to try to come up with some ideas. Um, we're going to see if we can get close. And I think you have a full-day meeting scheduled. We do. We have a full-day uh, workshop that we're going to work with, uh, like I said, the contractor and the architect and see if we can come up with some ideas to um, bring the project closer to our budget. Then we look forward to you coming back with the great news. Thank you. Oh, Thank wait, you. hold on, David. Yes, uh, Ed, sorry. Well, it's a question for you or, or no. for staff. It, it's just uh, Public Works said they were going to have a meeting next week. Is it your intention, Mr. City Manager, to bring this back on the 28th? That, that would be the goal. I'm, I don't want to overpromise and under, under deliver. So that would be the goal to be to turn this around as quickly as possible with a coherent recommendation from staff and the project manager about how we best proceed. So that's our goal. If yeah, we're I, able to I would agree with the other good. two speakers that I would like to have this back and at least come up with a plan ASAP. So I, I, whatever we could do to expedite it and get it back here on the 28th would be great. Thanks, David. Okay. Uh, Jacques. Yeah, it's not for you, unfortunately. Okay, okay. thank you, David. And so we'll go to comments. Oh, I'm gonna take you last okay. so you can no problem. figure out, anybody have anything to say? So pretty clear, we're just receiving a report. Yeah. Jacques, you're on. Yeah, yeah. Um, TJ, um, I'm glad that you brought up the example of what you and your wife went through. Uh, your home is very beautiful. I, I, Love it. Um, 
But I think when we do that with the library, I think the whole community, once it's built, we're just gonna love it equally as well in the sense that it's our library and once it's there, whatever happened before, we're gonna be just totally happy. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine it's gonna turn out as well as it did for you and your wife. Thank you, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Receive report on the status of Measure F projects, beach, jetty, flume, and wharf construction. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Council Members. Good evening. Uh, we're here tonight to approve the next phase of the engineering contract for our, our Moffat and Nickel engineering team that's working with us on the jetty, flume, and wharf project. Uh, we're underway with the permitting on the cons construction and design for those projects. And to date, we've held two public workshops, both um, April 9th and May 14th, that were pretty well attended. Uh, tonight, we have representatives from both the engineering and architectural team here to provide an update on the progress that's been made to date, currently what's underway, and our next steps. And with that, I'd like to introduce Sam Tooley, who's our uh, project manager from an engineering team. Thanks, Kailash. Hey, Sam. Uh, Good evening, City Council and Mayor. Um, I've met most of you, but for those of you who don't know me, my name's Sam Tooley, and I'm a professional engineer with the firm Moffat & Nickel. Uh, we are working, as you know, on the Capitola Beach improvements, um, and I'm joined here tonight with Dan Townsend and Dan Gomez from Fuse Architects. Um, they were selected with input from the city. We had an architect selection process as one of our initial tasks um, in this undertaking, and I'm here tonight to give you an update on the three projects we're working on. Um, so as you know, we're working on the wharf, flume, and jetty. Uh, to date, we, have, we are underway with conceptual design for all three project elements. Um, and tonight we are here to, well, as you know, we've submitted our proposal to continue to serve the city. Um, our intent is to take the jetty and the flume projects through final design, including permitting. Um, so that we can expedite the construction of those in the upcoming construction season. Um, and then we are proposing to continue the wharf through design development uh, so that we can fully evaluate the, the opportunities uh, for improvement and weigh the pros and cons to deliver on the promises of Measure F. Um, so as you know, here's the flume. Um, the project that's proposed is basically a maintenance project. We've evaluated several alternatives um, and we're still in the process of design development um, or of conceptual design. The first environmental meeting was today with the Army Corps and other permitting agencies that have jurisdiction um, and that meeting went well. The regulators are aware of the project and understand why it's important and what the needs and challenges for the <coughs> Capitola Beach are. So as you know the project elements that we're proposing are to repair the deteriorated structural elements, the concrete and the timber piles, um, and install a waterproof lining to stop the, the sand erosion from underneath the flume. The, the second project element is the jetty that creates the Capitola Beach. Um, the project as proposed is to simply restore it so that it continues to serve its function into the future. As you can see on the, slot, or on the image on the right of the slide, um, some of the rocks have scattered. Um, it's, a, it was, it's designed, I think, in the 50s, so it's nearing a pretty significant uh, design life. And if you watch the slide, you have to kind of squint at it. The proposed modification is not a substantial change. It's, just, it's simply to restore it so that it continues to serve its purpose, creating the Capitola Beach. Uh, the third project element is the wharf. Um, and in order to add resiliency to the wharf, we are proposing to widen a portion of it. It's shown there in yellow on the right. Um, you can see from the other two anecdotal images that the wharf experiences damage in large storm events. Um, and a, an effective way to mitigate that is to increase the foundation elements per bent. And so that will be accomplished by widening the most vulnerable portion. Um, in addition, when we've from our work with the city, we've identified several other areas of opportunity for improvement on the wharf, and those include replacing the buildings and other sort of feature improvements. Um, these elements are still uh, being evaluated, the pros, cons, and alternatives of, of options that we can take. Um, and as Kailash mentioned, to date we've had two public workshops um, to, to get public feedback on what the 
the preferred approaches for addressing the additional wharf improvements. Um, so in order to replace the buildings at the wharf head, our initial studies have indicated that in order to meet current code, the footprint will have to slightly increase. And so as proposed right now, it's to replace the bait shop building and the restaurant building with contemporary buildings um, of resilient materials so that they'll have a substantial um, design life extending into the future. Oh, the other element uh, out at the head of the wharf is to replace the public restroom uh, to make it more accessible. Um, in addition, at the foot of the wharf, we're proposing to provide new public restrooms um, to help um, yeah, to provide those facilities to beachgoers and other, other members of the community. Uh, this is an elevation view prepared by Fuse Architects, kind of showing the, the schematic um, proposed improvements. This is a seating element. Um, it is, it's, it's an opportunity that's been identified for improvement, that in the event that we're we're working on the wharf deck. There are some <coughs> possible elements we could Im include, and one of those is the is these um, additional seating elements. Um, this was well received at the uh, public outreach meeting. And then finally, there's been no um, no design development on any specific alternative for the buildings. Rather, we've just evaluated sort of the look and feel um, and the preferred visual vocabulary that we'll deploy on the proposed buildings. And so there are a couple um, kind of thematic images here that show the proposed, um, the proposed visual vocabulary uh, that Fuse Architects has prepared for us. And with that, I'd welcome any of your questions or any other info I can provide. Uh, I'm not certain if this is a question for you or for staff, but um, the contract amendment we're approving tonight is for only Moffitt and Nichols to proceed on the next phase of design? The, yeah, that, the, that's correct, but Fuse and then the permitting team are, are subs to Moffat and Nichols, so it's the whole team together. Does, is, is our only option to approve the entire amendment? Because I'm feeling um, nervous about the building portion of this, the two buildings. And I, when I look at three and a half million dollars, and I'm trying to justify the fact that we almost, we're, we're ready to spend almost seven million to make the wharf better, it seems like uh, I'm trying to weigh the wharf with the buildings. I don't know, the rest of the council can chime in later on, but do we, is this an all or nothing affair or can we slice and dice with you? We can definitely make modifications to the, to the scope that we're approving. If that's, okay. if that's, you know, if that's the direction that we're given, we can definitely right. do that. Good, thank you very much. Any other questions, council? I'm gonna open it up to the public. Anyone who would like to address us in the subject, please come forward. Seeing none. I'll bring it back, and Mr. City Manager. I, I think one point of clarification, and I'll look at Kailash and Steve to just confirm this, is I believe that this contract modification as proposed in front of you includes $70,000 for in design development on the, the buildings at the end of the wharf for the architects. That's the portion of this amendment that would be towards the buildings. Yes, that's correct. Then I guess I have one further question. It could be for the Dans, <laughs> of views, could be for you, and that is, what is the uh, downside if we were to go forward with your contract, less design development on the buildings, would we lose anything or could we come in later and say, oh, you know, that wharf design, you did a great job and it's not gonna cost as much as we thought, let's move back into the building business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say the most important part of this phase, um, obviously cost of the proposed improvements is of premier importance to the city. <laughs> Um, and one, one element that I think is important is in order to clearly um, estimate the proposed costs, you sort of have to know what you're working with. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, the, the order of magnitude cost estimates we've provided are just that. They're an order of magnitude cost estimates. So we, we think that the, the order of magnitude of the building improvements is, is, the, is in the hundreds of thousands to low millions of dollars. Um, design development would help us hone in on what a more uh, of, of what a realistic cost would be and it would also let us so, sort of steer the ship so we don't necessarily need to build the most premier building if a more uh, functional alternative would be better suited um, and the design development phase is what's going to help us evaluate those options and prepare information uh, to make those decisions 
You can tell from the previous item on our agenda how comfortable we are with estimates, so <laughs> thank you very much. Ed, you want to start off? Sure. Oh, Steve. Can I add really quick? It certainly is possible, um, you know, unlike the library program, we could do this in phases. Okay. We could do the wharf improvements, um, kind of end at the buildings, see where those costs finalize at, and then decide to redo the buildings as a phase two uh, at a later okay. date if good, we want. Good to know. That's a, a, but a when we, when we did rebuild the wharf and waited for phase <coughs> two in the buildings, we would certainly carry the uh, utilities to the point where the buildings would need right, them. Right, we would do everything up to the buildings as we're planning on doing. We don't want to paint ourselves in the corner. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Ed, start us off. Sure. Um, I, first of all, I have absolutely no problem with the flume and the jetty portion and whatever it takes for us to make some kind of agreement to proceed with those, I have no problem. Uh, I think I've expressed some concerns to our staff and to the engineers about um, what I envisioned uh, was going to happen with the wharf and actually what we can afford to do with the wharf and I still have reservations. Uh, I attended one of the meetings on the architectural design and I was thrilled that uh, most of the people loved the buildings that were proposed. Um, I do have concerns about, I have concerns about putting a beautiful building on an unstable foundation and so because of that I I made some recommendations or suggestions and this is going to open up a big can of worms so might as well be prepared for it. Um, you know, it, we, we were shown drawings of different warps up and down the, the coast, and um, what I'm afraid of is that maybe we didn't budget enough money for the wharf to do what I would like to do to provide a substantial safe wharf. Um, I, I have no problem with building a nice building out there, but uh, what, what a couple of engineers explained to me is, is that what I want is going to exceed maybe what we have available. And what I'll uh, alluding to is is that you know there's there's discussion about sea level rise the picture go back to that one picture with the wave where's the one where's my where's my talking point picture there it is yeah so at this point here <clears throat> water's either at the pier level or above it and you know I stood out there one day with the city manager when that storm was happening and we both said it was getting dark and we said I wonder if it's going to be here when we come back in the morning, okay, uh, referring to the wharf. And so, uh, and that's a great picture there because I can build off of that. So what, what I'm proposing is, is, is I thought when we were going to, in my mind, this is what I thought, this maybe wasn't what we have voted on or what Measure F was, but um, I thought it would be nice if we could raise the level of the wharf. And by doing that, what we're doing is reinforcing every pier and pylon that's there and building what was what the engineers refer to as a semi-bulletproof Santa Barbara pier, for lack of a better term, because it was the, they said that that was probably the best one that had been designed. Problem is the cost of that, you know, they told me it was approximately $18 million, and I said, I need another tax measure, okay, which is, it was, was a joke, but I mean, it, it, maybe yes, maybe no. So when I look at this drawing, I ask myself, and this is what, what I'm, if I'm going to postpone, is I just would like to have some further discussion with the engineers and maybe at least let the council know what I'm thinking. As I look at all the yellow portion on that drawing, and I call that phase two, and uh, I know what our intent was, as the engineers recommended to us, that we stabilize the wharf three times by building it twice as wide, which was a great concept. <coughs> I've never really cared about what we put on top of the wharf. My main concern was is that we s make the structure sound so that it lasts for a period of time. And when we talk about this wharf, they tell me that, well, this is going to make the wharf, la wharf last for 20 years. And I'm thinking, that's not what I had in mind, or I don't think that's a, a, a long enough guarantee. And I'm thinking, it's, is this wisely investing our money? So if we were to take, how about the next one? Uh, Sam, we go to the picture of the two restaurants and the, wa the, the head of the wharf. There we go, perfect. So I'm thinking if we just take the, because what I, my goal is, is I'm thinking if we take the section underneath the buildings and we redo all of that and raise it up, then I feel good about building the buildings. And that may be, you know, whatever version we're talking about, or maybe a lesser version, um, whatever. But at least the portion underneath there is completely redone, it's stable. And then at some point, probably where those boats are all stored, um, it tapers back down to the existing wharf, some kind of a, a ramp that uh, some ADA compliant or whatever that would be. But then 
And then, you know, I would, I, I hate to admit it, but I'd probably suggest that we do, uh, we did a 10 year tax measure. We might have to extend it for another 10 years to finish the rest of the wharf, but at least at the end of the day, the money that we've spent is reasonably sound and secure rather than to, to do this project and have something that we all say at the end of the day, which is what we don't want to say with this library, is something that doesn't deliver what, we, what, our, what our intent was. So I guess what I'd like to go back is when, when if we're doing design and drawing, maybe just come back with an estimate of just rebuilding the portion from where it says parking towards the end, raising it up three feet or four feet or whatever the, you know, whatever the reasonable number is and, uh, and proceed from there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the engineer up, but before you speak, I'm gonna propose something to you because you did open up a big can of worms and now I have to open up a can next to yours because that's the way we are. And, and also ask at the same time with regard to this plan, if phase one were the first widening and raising of the wharf and phase two were the head, taking it backwards. What I'm trying to get to is the part of the wharf I'm really worried about is the skinny portion. So if we take phase one as the skinny portion being widened by a third and elevated as phase one and then worry about the head of the wharf. Can you address both of those harebrained ideas? <laughs> I would be happy to, um, but both are, are certainly options, um, and there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, I'll start with... Speak freely. <laughs> I, I, I am. <laughs> um, the obvious benefit with replacing the wharf head and replacing the buildings is that the city of Capitola will get new buildings, because we know that these are nearing the, the end of their useful life. Um, but in addition, um, Mayor Termini, your, your point is well taken, that the wharf is only as resilient <coughs> as the weakest link. And so in the event that you had a beautiful wharf head with new buildings that you couldn't get to because of a storm, you'd, you wouldn't be in a great position either. Um, that, uh, that being said, there, there's a difference between safety and resiliency. Um, the wharf has a good track record of safety. It, it meets the design loads even in extreme events. Um, the proposed addition would be to add resiliency, so you would widen it so that in the event of a major event, you don't, you don't necessarily lose access. So those are definitely possibilities that could be evaluated. Um, it would probably need to be studied in more depth than the commentary I can give tonight to evaluate um, the, the true value of each of them. Can you speak to um, the difficulty and expense in elevating the wharf? It, it, it would be a significant undertaking. Um, elevating the wharf would be quite complicated, um, basically because you would need to create a structure that, that would be joined to the top of an A, existing and potentially deteriorated structure, but B, you're adding a point of weakness in the middle of the pile. So you, there's some, there are some extra things to consider, but it's certainly um, a viable alternative. It's been done on several wharves and of course, the premier option is to replace it with a wharf that's made of contemporary materials at a higher elevation. At a much greater expense. <laughs> at, at a much greater expense, yes. Because, okay, good. I, I think what I'm asking for here is, is that since we're doing design dollars here, uh, and, and you said I need to go back and make a presentation, and I, and I think that, that I need, you know, to be satisfied with whatever we do, I need that presentation and, and just would like the council's uh, how would the addition of these two other options, both of them talking about raising it, one from the head, one from the tail, um, how does that affect the next phase of your contract and any extra work that we've just piled on to you? Um, the next phase of our contract is for design development. So it's taken to 30% design for, for an alternative. Um, we would be happy to, to you know, divvy up efforts so that we'd study different, different alternatives into, into enough uh, detail that we'd be able to provide that to you. Okay, I'm gonna let the rest of the council weigh in, and I'm gonna ask Steve to come up and weigh in as well after the council members speak. Kristen, anything to say? Wow, you really did open a can of worms there. <laughs> I don't even know how to. I, I'm interested in seeing what it would look like to, to raise either part or all of it, um, if that's something that's already included in our design contract and as, as I'm understanding it is that you would be able to 
show us those options and it's already in what we have here? So, so we have a certain amount of budget allocated for, for, for furthering the design. Um, we can allocate that budget however would best serve the city. So we could do many options to a, to a lower degree of detail, um, or this option is to, as we proposed it, it's to study the, the widening option right. um, to a 30% design level. Okay. Yeah, I guess all I have to say is I'm I'm not uh, opposed to seeing the options. Uh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little shocked that that's an option at all to raise the wharf, um, and that's new information to me. I'm gonna have to think on that, but I'm I'm interested and curious to hear more about it. So um, if the wharf is raised as opposed to at the same height, what are we buying in terms of years? Do you have a sense? I mean, you can't predict what storms are going to be like, there's sea level rise and all that, but do you have a sense of what it's buying us actually? So there are widely varying sea level rise estimates. As, as you may know, the science is um, highly speculative at this Correct. point. Um, that being said, there is, it, it's a very robust but un, um, unprecise science at this point. So the way we would evaluate it is in terms of risk. Like the, the likelihood that the sea level will rise X over this number of years is say 50%. Therefore your risk of inundation of the waves reaching the height they are today would, is similar to that. And so you can look at it over a, over a span of years with varying alternatives and you can find an optimal solution where it makes sense to invest your dollars and and decrease the risk a measurable amount. Mm -hmm. It would be a coastal engineering study is what that would be. It's a gray area. Well, <laughs> you did in a way, so you're trying to define risk and it is perhaps hard to do. But um, if we're gonna spend X amount of dollars and let's say you know, 1.5 X to raise it, I wanna know what we're gonna get out of it in terms of you know, the life of the wharf, and the wharf's lasted a pretty long time. We've replaced pilings and stuff Certainly. like that. So, you know, it's our dollars, and what are we gonna get out of the two different scenarios? That's that's really where I'm going here. Certainly, and that, that's something we could provide you. Okay. Mr. City Manager, you had a question in your eyes? The, the one point I wanna make is that as we look ahead in the future years, our, our revenues look quite constrained yeah. with multi-year budget projections, and my recommendation at this point is is that we've we've done a fair amount of work on the wharf, and Brad and and um, his team have have made a recommendation about the best way to spend dollars to increase the wharf's resiliency. And we, you know we have to keep in mind that nothing is forever out there in the Pacific Ocean. You know, it's imp I don't think we're going to be in a position where we can design a 50-year project out there. So I would caution the council about going too far down a option that's more expensive or contingent upon another tax at this stage in the game. I think we need to focus on project delivery and probably thinking about you know, what sort of scope we can actually afford at this stage, um, given what we just saw with the library. I think what Councilmember Botark was um, putting forward was not necessarily <coughs> spending twice as much, but taking it in two phases and spending what we can afford now, but in a wise way. Does that typify it? Pretty much, yeah. I mean. It, we, we obviously we've learned a lesson in the library and, uh, and realistically you know even the best estimates by the engineer may not come close to what they are but they're going to give us at least a keyhole idea as to what this could cost and that's what i'm asking for at this point is like can we afford to do what i just suggested and 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 i realize right now is, is that it, you know when i originally brought up the idea at the last meeting it was an 18 million dollar cost to raise the entire wharf which we don't have but you know i started looking at that at that well, uh, widening prog progress, and it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of square footage on, on the wharf. So maybe it's possible. I don't even know. I mean, I, I'm just asking for a number to say, if we're going to put the money into the buildings, which we haven't even come close to deciding that, but there's estimates on here for a million and a half for a boathouse and a million and a half for a restaurant. It's three million dollars on something that is, you know, on a foundation that that nobody's going to say it's going to last 20 years. Okay, we're gonna, uh, the plan calls for not a lot of pilings to be replaced underneath the restaurants, as 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 you're looking at it now. It, it, I uh, the only uh, there are a few things that I would change in that characterization. Please um, do. Th the first is the design life of 20 years. Obviously, the wharf has lasted 
a much longer time frame than 20 years. What the engineers mean by, by that is 20 years before your first routine maintenance. So we know currently that the wharf needs a, a pretty significant amount of maintenance effort every X number of years. Um, and the, the, the additional resiliency would, de would decrease that investment. So it would increase the number of years between um, required maintenance. So by 20 years, it's 20 years before you would likely have to go in and replace piles to, to have full access of the wharf. But it's not, it's not to say that the wharf ends its useful life 20 years from now. It's, it would just require further maintenance. Thank you. Stephanie? I'd be interested in looking at the cost, too, of raising it. It may, it may not be affordable, but we, we can certainly look at it. I'm, uh, I'm interested in that as well, and especially uh, I'm interested in your proposal to do it f in phases, because that makes good sense, and that every dollar we spend has a, a purpose and a, and a, and a benefit. Um, are you saying, Ed, that you're interested in going forward and hearing these proposals with the addition of the raising and the phasing, well, how do you feel about building design development? Should that be uh, belayed at this point? Well, I, I think what we need to do on the building design, I mean, at this point, uh, it's hard for me to, to discuss what kind of building I'm putting on it because I think if it comes back with the estimates <coughs> that, um, that we find that it may be affordable just to raise the section at the end, uh, that we have the money in the budget to do that, then we could go to the buildings and I would be more generous on the kind of building I'm putting out there. But if it comes back that we decide, you know, this is really unreasonable, unrealistic, and it's more important to widen the work. Because I'm, I'm under a philosophy that I'm thinking the waves are bigger the farther they're out, and it's not as dramatic. The wharf doesn't take as much of a beating closer in. You may s tell me different, okay? I'm not the it's, engineer. It's okay. surprising. I'm not the engineer. You want, you want to come up with surprises? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you brought the reverse plan up, so he and he said there's merits to both, but he didn't elaborate. So. The, the only thing I would say is we've we've experienced pile deterioration along the whole wharf um, in large wave events, and the the photo we've we've used to represent the the most extreme damage case was in the narrow portion uh, at the land side. So it, it's it's a highly vulnerable part of the structure. Yeah, I, I, I'm for doing the whole thing. I just don't have the money. Okay, so Ed, is it is it would it be your motion should you choose to make it? To give them the um, give them the amendment to their contract, but not include building design development at this time. I'd like to make a motion that you explore the options we discussed and to put a hold on the further uh, evaluation of what kind of buildings are going to go on top until we can agree on what the foundation is going to actually be. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second it. Josh seconded it. Can we, Mr. Treasurer. Can we, uh, I didn't get a, a feeling as to the delta cost of going back and studying some more. No, well, it's the amendment is in the report, and of that amount to this firm, 70,000 of it was building development design. So that's the portion that has not been motioned, just the design development. And they said they can, they can uh, segregate their design development to give us the options when they come back. So Ed has motioned the amendment less the seventy thousand for building development. But but if they if this if he didn't make that motion, he, they'd still spend the seventy thousand dollars. Only they would get further down the line. No, sure. The, the building the seventy thousand was, as I understand it, just for the building development. And the only thing Councilmember Botroff is asking for is the wharf development design in the phasing and the elevation. Is that correct? Yes, Steve. You can clarify. Would there be any additional costs? To, to, to give us the estimates that we just asked for. There, there is sufficient funding in the contract um, for Moffitt and Nichols portion of it to do that. There's some um, contingencies we built into that because we're still kind of unknown. And then we so I think they could do that analysis that you're looking for um, within their Moffitt and Nichols portion of the contract. The part as a subconsultant confused is a $70,000 Right. That I think we're looking at deferring at this point. Per defer. That that's the word that I would like to right. do at this point. That is was it, the motion in the second. Th that's the motion it yeah. is to defer that okay. until we get something back using the residual or funds that we have, and then I'll feel confident about moving forward because our, you know our direction may be determined just by our ability to pay for it. So, Jacques, do you have a question? Um, sort of a question. You know, since we have this lucky organization in California called the. Coastal Commission, um, raising the level of the wharf, would that be an issue? Do you anticipate that being a significant thing or it, uh, 
Does that adds cost just in the approval? And I have no idea if it's even feasible from their perspective. Mm, this is off the top of my head. You know, the yeah, coastal no, the, the coastal act certainly talks about you know views of the water of the mm -hmm. ocean being important yeah, components. Uh, whether or not their view would be that if the wharf was a few feet higher. Um, would that increase their level of scrutiny? Mm. It's hard for me to speculate. Um, I think as a general rule of thumb, making changes like that does tend to increase regulatory complexity. How much so is difficult for me to predict. Okay, just curious. Okay, if there are no other comments, uh, oh, Steve. Just comment quickly. Please. Thank you. So um, just to reiterate what, what Sam said in response, when we started this project and, and came up with the Measure F concept, it was to make it so we don't have as many closures of the wharf mm -hmm. during storms. And, and, and I think that gets to the, the trestle widening uh, more than it does the head. The head, I absolutely understand where Councilman Botorf is coming with, you know, are we gonna put $3 million buildings out at the end of this wharf? I, I get that. but. Our focus was trying to keep the wharf open and not have these two-month closures because we lost two pilings in the middle of the wharf and we can't drive out there anymore. So I think, um, you know, I think that needs to remain our focus, and we can certainly look at, at raising it the other way. And then regarding raising, you know, when we talked with um, Sam's boss Brad about raising it, um, he said the. Probably the only practical way to do it is to completely rebuild it. So you would, you know, pull or, or cut off the pilings that are there and put in new pilings. Um, and at that point, you put in, you know, the, the Santa Monica version where you have cement pilings and a cement deck with a wood top to remain the look. And, and, and certainly that's, I think, uh, a good target. I think that gets that $18 million price tag. So we, we need to look at what we're going to do at the work because we're going to, pull out all the pilings and put in new pilings. You know, there's options there too, but that could get really expensive. So I just wanted to remind everybody where we started from was trying to just not have these closures for two months because we lose two pilings. What are your feelings about um, the phasing as opposed to trying to take on an $18 million project all at once? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's just w which phases are the more critical and, and if raising it is really going to be, I don't know if, how affordable that is, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you. Well, sure. um, so that worries me at, at the end. Oh, I, we have I, I think it's right that we, we do that analysis now before we spend much more time um, designing nice looking buildings out there. I mean, we know we need them, but let's make sure that they're, they'll be there the whole 20 years that we want to move forward. Jacques, do you have a question of Steve? Uh, yeah. Microphone, please. Sorry. So um, the time element has me concerned because there's two businesses out there. So be that in the analysis also, because during this phase, they're going to be out of business, right? Obviously. So, you know, depending on how the phasing goes. Yeah. I mean, I, I would think if we f did my initial phase where we widen the wharf and do all the wharf improvements, they could stay open for portions of that. Obviously, once we're talking, tearing down the buildings, they're going to be closed for, for quite a while, probably yeah. upwards of a year that we wouldn't have any buildings out there. Oh, yeah. But raising the wharf, that might add significant time. That's sort of what prompted this. If you're demoing it and starting over, I, I, you know, I don't know how much different that's going to be from just tearing down the buildings and redecking and rebuilding. Okay. Um, certainly would add something, but I don't think it's not significant. Scheme, yes. Okay. Great. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Harlan? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Botorf? Aye. Mayor Termini? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much, folks. We'll move on to the next general government hearing. That is the Capitola Beach Festival special event permit. And for this, I think we're bringing the chief up. Good evening, Mayor Termini, council members. Uh, before you tonight to um, uh, present and discuss the uh, introduce um, a new special event permit request for uh, the Capitola Beach Festival that's planned for September 29th and 30th of this year 2018 uh, so I'm going to give you an overview uh, I have the staff report in front of you I'm going to give you an overview uh, of the new event uh, request as it's been presented to staff and the police department 
The organizers of the event, um, of the Beach Festival Committee, are a joint group that includes uh, many former Begonia Festival Committee members, as well as Wharf to Wharf Committee members. As a point of reference for this evening for Council, uh, you'll remember that on March 8th, staff was before you presenting a conceptual uh, review um, of the what was then referred to as the Water Festival. And that's a point of clarification I want to emphasize that the actual name of the proposed event is the Capitola Beach Festival, not the Water Festival. In your staff report, there's an error on uh, paragraph two. The date should be March 8th, not, not May. I think it was listed as May 24th. <coughs> I'll touch on in a moment some of the uh, discussion, some of the pros and some of the concerns that were presented during that March 8th conceptual review of this new special event permit. Uh, it's worth mentioning some of the events that would take place um, as proposed on the 29th and 30th of September. On Saturday, there's three events. Uh, from 7 till about 11 in the morning is the Little Wharf to Wharf. It's a three-mile run. From 10 to 4 p.m. is a horseshoe competition. From as proposed, sunset or 7 p.m. until 8.30 in the evening, a nautical parade. And then on Sunday, there are four other events. 6.30 to noon, a, a fishing derby on the wharf. 8.30 to noon, sandcastle contest. From 9 o'clock to noon, chalk art. And from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, a rowboat race. And certainly, you'll recognize that many of those events are events that were associated with the Begonia Festival for many years and events that the community here in Capitola is very supportive of, uh, supportive of uh, and is greatly interested in. For this evening, I want to talk about two events for this weekend, specifically the Little Wharf to Wharf and the Nautical Parade. Those are the two events that would require the larger uh, amount of staff time uh, and police resources as proposed. And I'm going to start with the Little Wharf to Wharf. Um, as documented in the staff report, it's, an, it's a 7 a.m. start. The race will start at 7 a.m. Uh, at about 17th and Portola. And as projected, the last runner may arrive at the finish line at about 9.15 in the morning. It's a three-mile run with um, potentially up to 5,000 uh, competitors or runners. Very much a local race as compared to the Wharf to Wharf, about half the distance, and really, um, um, as introduced, more of a local and family-oriented race, uh, three-mile race. There will be road closures, the typical road closures along that route from 17th and Portola down here into the village. Uh, with traffic control points staffed by the organizers, the organizing committee, and specifically the Wharf to Wharf uh, race committee. Uh, there will be a village closure, as is always the case with races that uh, uh, come into Capitola and end in the village. Uh, that closure would be from about uh, 6.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the morning if things go well, which includes an ability to escort the runners, the participants, by shuttle back to where they park their cars at the Capitola Mall. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, from sta staff's perspective and from a public safety perspective, the largest concern for this race is that shuttle plan. Uh, during the conceptual review, we didn't discuss that much. Um, I will uh, compliment the organizers that many things have been discussed post-conceptual review that are in place now that make the management of both of these events a little bit more, uh, we anticipate, um, uh, more, will be more effective as a, as a staff to manage the events. Um, the next event is um, a lighted nautical parade on, on Soquel Creek. On the same day, on Saturday, um, from about sunset, 7 p.m. until 8.30. I want to specifically mention uh, and remind Council of some of the concerns that were discussed during that March 8th presentation here at Council. Um, and, I and I made a list, so I'll talk about each of them. Uh, a nighttime event on the water generated some concern, both for staff, for the police department, from a public safety perspective, uh, and from council and some of the uh, community. Uh, water congestion was a concern. Um, what's the process for managing the water congestion? Uh, the impact, potential impact on Riverview residents or, or those who live in the homes along, um, along the river. Uh, concern about coordinating as a police department uh, with the fire department. Uh, and more specifically, and I'll get to that in a minute, more specifically with Santa Cruz Fire Department who is going to provide lifeguard services for this event as it is proposed now. Uh, and then lastly, 
uh, simply stated public safety concern and the draw on police resources. So as a reminder, those are some of the, uh, some of the items that were brought to our attention during the March 8th conceptual presentation. Here's a list of the conditions that we have in uh, staff in meeting with the event organizers have discussed and have been agreed upon. It was real important for staff and more specifically for the police department uh, to recommend that there's an actual start time and a finish time for a nautical parade. And in fact, that, that has been agreed upon. That's different than the conceptual presentation on the March 8th. The start time will be sunset. On record right now, that's 7 p.m. And the end time will be 8.30 p.m. when the nautical, the lighted nautical parade uh, concludes. 12 barges only, up to 12 barges only, uh, for the decorated or lighted portion of this event. Much different than uh, a presentation that would suggest that everybody could be on the, uh, the, the creek um, with a lighted device. Really important, uh, four water marshals on the water that are going to coordinate the path of the nautical parade uh, and assist with the um, floats, uh, barges, at the conclusion at 8.30, 830 uh, to remove themselves from the water. As I mentioned, the city of Santa Cruz is gonna provide lifeguard services uh, along the creek path as well as along the creek itself. Um, portable beach lighting has been agreed to at two points uh, at the end of the lagoon and potentially on one of the, um, uh, near the uh, Stockton Bridge at the, the kind of the beach entrance to the creek. Um, we did, had a lot of discussion about this no lights of the, the lighted uh, floats. No lights will be turned on until after those floats have passed under the trestle. That will be at seven o'clock. So in essence, that's the start of the lighted parade. They'll travel uh, under, the, under the bridge into the lagoon and then the lights will go off at 8.30 indicating the end of the parade. And then the event organizers have to agreed to contract first alarm, uh, first alarm security uh, so that we can, they can properly uh, advise and post security officers at the trestle entry points, elevated points, so that we don't have uh, viewers, spectators uh, above the trestle while there's a parade going on um, on the creek below. That addresses uh, many of the concerns, I, I believe, uh, many of the concerns that were presented early on. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had some discussion with staff and the police department with the event organizers. Um, and these conditions that will be in place if this permit is approved uh, are the necessary conditions, in my opinion, so that I can feel comfortable maintaining public safety with a nighttime lighted event on Soquel Creek. I might mention uh, as a reminder, and I'll ask the city manager to help me out here, if the permit is approved, approved, there may be a requirement for the Coastal Commission to weigh in on this type of event, I believe. We don't, we don't know for sure yet, but I'll ask you to comment, Mr. City Manager. Yeah, so as clarification, we have done some preliminary outreach with our biologists to see whether or not a lighted parade would have different types of impacts in the lagoon than the traditional parade. Preliminary indications are that their biologists seem to be okay with it, but um, just to be clear that if the council's direction this evening was to proceed with the issuance of the SCP, we would, uh, our staff would have to interface with the various regulatory agencies and make sure that there wasn't an issue with uh, the night parade as proposed with the limitations the chief has described. Thank you. Chief, anything further? That con completes or concludes my overview and I'm more than happy to answer questions that you might have. Questions of the chief, Ed? How many lifeguards is Santa Cruz gonna be providing? Four. Okay, and um, when we closed the top of the trestle last year, was that done by security guards or by PD? That was done by the police department. And are you comfortable with substituting uh, hired security rather than police and having the same effectiveness? I am because we'll, we will, in conjunction with the event organizers, be able to provide some level of uh, a patrol uh, or oversight at what, be the, what would be the entry points to the trestle. But I think it's important that they have posted security officers in uniform on the trestle itself, supported by the proper signage to keep the pedestrians off. And on the, you said there was gonna be some kind of path lighting that was gonna be provided for, for tourists and uh, along the path. That's, okay. there, uh, that's not a, I don't believe Decorative that. lighting along the path that, uh, that goes in line, and, and I forgot to mention, that goes in line with the, the period of time where the floats are being decorated, which uh, I'm gonna refer to my report here, as I, I believe is from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. And then lighting strung along the path as proposed. There'll be lighting along the path? Yes. What time is that lighting gonna go off? 
my recommendation is that lighting goes off at the end of the lighted parade at 8.30. Yeah, that's a question. Uh, let me uh, add some comment on that because I think if the people are there when it's over, uh, I'm thinking that it should go off at some time after that, but maybe not necessarily right at 8.30. They're going to take some time to clear the paths. Sure. But I, I, I guess that for the homeowners, I'm sure they want to restore to normal as soon as possible, but I don't know that maybe 8.30 is exactly... Councilmember Botter, one of the things to keep in mind is, is that the, 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 the event will conclude with all of the floats, the up to... 12 barges? Up to 12 barges. Up to 12 barges in the lagoon at 8.30. Right. Uh, and then their lights go off. So, I, you know, the activity on the path by 8 o'clock, 8.15, is going to essentially be over. Because at that point, all the barges will be in the lagoon. It's going to be dark out. And there's sort of nothing at that point to see in the water. So I think encouraging folks, whether it's 8.45 or 8.30, uh, that the lights go off on the path, I think the activity on the path should be done by 8.30. So what you're saying is, is it? Are you saying that when the barges go back under the Stockton Bridge, they won't won't have their lights on any longer? That, That's that, correct. At, at 8:30, at the end of the lagoon, uh, um, the lights will go off, off, and those barges will be escorted by the four marshals to the point the, that that they select to get them out of the water. Sure. So we don't anticipate there being crowds along the river because all the boats will be in the lagoon. Yeah. The intent is not to have a second parade That's back right. up the river. Okay. And I might mention that one of the decisions that we will consider in the evening and the reason for those light stanchions being on the beach, two of them, is to utilize those lights if needed, if there's some congestion with pedestrians, and safely getting them uh, from either the Stockton Bridge uh, or out of the venue. We can certainly use those lights if needed. All my questions. Ed, you had a question? Or sorry, no, Jacques, okay. you had a question? Uh, hey, Ed. Hi, Jacques. Okay. <laughs> so um, you covered a lot of things that... Um, I found out. Um, well, first of all, I went up and down uh, Riverview and talked to a lot of residents. Um, I talked to about 12. Um, probably would have had uh, more, but they were listening to music because it was Wednesday that I had the time to do it. Um, so one thing you haven't covered to me is liability. Uh, how are we dealing with that? And so that was brought up by one of the residents as a concern they thought the city should worry about. And I'm going to assume that you're more you're specifically asking about liability for an evening event as opposed to <coughs> overall liability for a special yes, event uh, permit. Yes, yeah, correct. I'm sorry, I should have said that. Yes, the light boat parade, uh, being that it's in water, there's a chance someone might fall over. It's relatively dark; you might not notice the person. Those are the things that were brought up. I myself was was concerned from a liability perspective during the conceptual review when there was no specific information or plan in place to manage the total number of people on the river. Okay. And I think by having up to 12 decorated lighted barges and no more, that minimizes the liability as it relates to the number of people on the creek. Got it. The, as I mentioned, the uh, ability to have uh, portable lighting, if needed, uh, available to, to the police department, certainly minimizes liability uh, should we need to light up the venue for safety purposes. Four marshals yeah. on the water uh, is an effort to manage liability. A and, of course, having Santa Cruz Fire and their highly trained lifeguards as part of the event manages liability as well. Okay, got it. Um, got so, excuse me? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I would also note that the, the special event permit requires the event organizers to obtain a million-dollar insurance policy and hold the city harmless right. um, from okay. liability. I I, I'm sure we do these things. I just wanted to ask anyway. So, you know, it was basically about two said no, absolutely, and ten people did say yes. Um, but it's important to bring up a couple issues when they did say yes. Um, it wasn't like I was qualified. It was, we kind of like to, uh, some people would say, we kind of like to see what it does for a year. In other words, so a trial run, and we're not just doing a blanket thing. So people would like to see if it's well managed, uh, good um, outcomes, people are happy and stuff like that. So that's um, sort of a comment that I received. Um, I think you're addressing one thing that really did come up quite a bit, and it's mostly based on uh, residents' experience with the Begonia Festival in particular, where a lot of people uh, have drunk a lot and they're all wandering around and stuff like that. So the general comment was, like to see the presence of police and others that have the authority to help manage the situation um, just to make people know that they're being watched. If there's anything that comes out of control, they're actually there. So um, I think that would go a long way to you know getting the, the general public that live there happy about this event. If they see people on the path 
in the road and they have that sense that there's someone watching, there's someone actually there so that uh, it doesn't get out of control. I, I might comment on that, on that point that with two events in one day, the little wharf to wharf that we are not going to treat as a little race. It may have 5,000 competitors or participants. Right. And the nautical parade. Staff in the police department had to decide which event is larger in our minds and do we need to commit our resources, in other words, those officers who are on a day off right. on an overtime basis to make sure that it's a safe event. And in fact, that's the nautical parade. Okay, I, I think that was a great choice. I'm really um, happy you made that choice. Um, I'll just give you a little side story for um, everyone to listen to. Um, so I knocked on this one uh, young lady's uh, house and uh, she came out and I told her and she said, wow, this is great. I just moved to Capitola and this is what she's gonna do. <laughs> she was just like really great. So she was very happy she moved to Capitola and um, I hope it turns out great. Stephanie? Any questions? I'm cautious about it. I, I don't like the idea of having an, a nighttime activity down there. I'm, I'm just very concerned about any, public any, safety. Any questions of the chief? No? Okay. I have a yes, Kristen, yeah. sorry. Um, I'm just wondering because we have received comments from people who are concerned that the party is going to go on on the river walk after the actual parade is over. And so even if it's not our. Um, our own officers. Is there any kind of plan for requesting more first alarm guards or anything to kind of make sure that people move along when it's done? And I understand that the idea is that we're going to be wandering down to the lagoon and we're going to stay there. And, and I think that's how it's going to go. But for the sake of kind of addressing the concerns that some of the residents have shared, I'd like to know, you know, are there any plans to ensure the parade observers, observers leave the river walk when it's over and then maybe kind of a follow up a half an hour later to make sure no one decided to just stick around and party down there? Yeah, great question. I, I do think that the that a large number of the people who were on the river walk uh, will be closer to the bridge and the lagoon at the end of the parade. Sure. Uh, and I think designating an end time, um, uh, relying upon the marshals to escort those people off the water, um, manages that concern in part. The other thing worth mentioning, and it's in the staff agenda report, the event organizers will be tasked with as one of the conditions having staff available from their group to do that very thing and hopefully they're wearing some attire that identifies them as staff so that they can be mobile along the river walk answer questions direct people away from the river walk at the conclusion of the event that would greatly assist the police department and then i guess my other question is you mentioned that there were uh, concerns about coordinating with the santa cruz fire department what what, what concerns are there just coordination logistics in general or I think that concern was more specific to safety on the water than oh, okay. it was to ha having the uh, 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 central fire district uh, working in conjunction with the police department on this event that's been addressed in my opinion with the plan to have Santa Cruz fire lifeguards okay. part of this event thank you question of the chief yeah question so when you said that I thought you were referring to the Santa Cruz aquatics because they do have an aquatic division and they're set up for water rescue and stuff so am I mistaken is it just general we're referring aquatic? to the same uh, uh, lifeguard group that supports yeah. us during the summer events okay. to provide that's right services. Just okay got it. thank you chief thank I'm you. gonna open up the public hearing now anyone from the public oh sorry mr. city treasurer what do you have so I have a question for the chief if you don't mind um so you took a, a, a 10 percent uh, budget hit uh, in this coming budget on your overtime. Does this impact that estimate or do you wish to push back because of this uh, event on your estimate? No, it, 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 I, I don't predict it's going to uh, interfere with my estimate at all. And, and in fact, the Begonia Festival was probably the largest draw on police resources from both a, both a cost and a, and a personnel perspective. This will be a draw, but it doesn't interfere from a budgetary perspective, in my opinion. Thank you. I'll now open up the public portion. Anyone who would like to address the council on this item on the agenda, please come forward to the podium. And we're going to need time on this because I think we're going to have a bunch of speakers. I hope I, I promise not to go on all that long. I'm Dave Payton, and uh, Mayor and Council, thank you for uh, taking the time today. I want to add a little bit of detail to what the chief presented, and uh, I'll work off a little bit of my notes, but let, I wanted to talk a little bit how. It's going to be set up a little bit in terms of the lighted uh, parade. Um, as we've, over the last couple of weeks or so, we've begun to develop in a little bit more detail. Uh, we're concerned about the impact on the creek itself and certainly the Creekside residents. And so, what we're hopeful of doing is assigning 
uh, times that people will come and build their floats. And this is the concept. So what you do is you, you create and design something off site. You bring it onto site, and we're talking about that area that's the, what I think you refer to the beachfront. Someone did that kind of open area by the pump house there. And people would be assigned a time to come in and construct their float and set their float aside until they were all, all there con at, at 7 o'clock or 7.30. Uh, the goal we had was to, to eliminate a lot of pressure onto the, uh, the Creekside residents and, and working ourselves up the creek. The, the, uh, the event itself will take place from the, the, the trestle down into and around the, the uh, lagoon. That's the only thing it'll do. So it'll have the least amount of impact, we think, based on, uh, on what the begonias had in the past. What we won't have is we won't have thousands of people on the path, we won't have days of construction, and we won't have the, the, the begonia blossoms littering the creek, though we obviously clean them up. So this is gonna be a neat, simple, this is our concept anyway, a neat, simple process where we don't involve the creek and we don't involve the residents all that much. So we think it's gonna, gonna really minimize that. So that'll add some detail to, to uh, what the chief had, had talked about a little bit. And of course you all know we've, we've uh, we brought together an incredible team of people, volunteers that can pull this off from Begonia and, and Art and Wine, the car show, and Wharf to Wharf, and now from the, uh, the uh, Yacht Harbor's uh, lighted boat parade. So we've got a, a group of people who can certainly do this. And I think lastly, let me just comment about the business community has now supported this fully. We're, we're ready to, we're locked and loaded and ready to go. In fact, we're on time and we're on budget. So uh, in t today's hearings, I guess that's that's, that makes that's us rare, doesn't it? That's a first. <laughs> but uh, just to let you know, I think that if, if, if it were me, it seems that, that a lighted boat parade would enhance the, the, the crowds in, in, on a Saturday evening and it's gotta benefit our merchants in some way. So anyway, that's my spiel and thank you so much. Oh, wait, I think Councilmember Botroff would like to yeah, do some uh, question drill down. Uh, you said something about it, and I wasn't sure if, if, if your intent, but it sounded like that if you're going to build a barge, you, you would be given the time and you could put it in the water. Would this preclude Nels Westman from building a barge in his backyard and coming down the river, or would that still no, be? Not necessarily. Oh. Now, those on the river, but, I, but in order to mitigate that, that impact on the, the residents along the Creekside, we felt that we'd have that option. So those who, who aren't and can't find a spot along the Creekside would, then, would have okay. be able to avail themselves of that spot in that open area. So we'd have to kind of have an idea that, you know, this is the time you show up, you've got an hour to construct it, but you've already brought something uh, that we've already provided guidelines and some, some criteria for how you bring that and, and bring it to that. So that's kind of how we're, we're this, is, uh, this is unfolding as we, sure. as I wrote it down today. So it's, we're, we're working along. Thank you, Dave. But I think that'll be helpful anyway. Good. Or if some council member who happens to live on the creek has a bug to build something, you know, it's yeah, just saying that. Uh, someone else, please come on up. Anyone else? I know there's more. Okay. On camp, you're next. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. Yeah. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Council. Um, this, I'm Lori Hill, and I've got 17 years of experience with the Begoni Festival. Um, the team that is bringing you the Capitola Beach Festival is uh, primarily built of the experienced members of the Begonia Festival. Uh, the community loved the Begonia Festival. We were sad to see it go, and we were actually told that, you know, we didn't have permission to let it go. Um, and here's a group of people that are willing to step up and provide another community-oriented festival over a weekend. I think their schedule is manageable. Um, Begonia Festival uh, had activities going into the evening, Friday, Saturday, you know. It, we had activities all the time, and I've, I've always apologized to the chief because the first year that he came to Capitola, we presented a festival that was this big, and it was his first Begonia Festival, and I promised we would never do that again, and we're not. Uh, and to look at the, the, the new proposal for the nautical parade, um, you can think of any number of other possibilities for a nautical parade. But in this case, what this brings us is a way to kind of look forward in ideas for designing and, and putting together these barges. And I'd like to think of it as, you know, the technology and embracing, you know, the, the special lights and, you know, maybe even uses of computers in the future to, to move things. Um, but to look to the future and look to the youth. They are interested in building that kind of float. They aren't interested in building the kinds of floats that we did for Begonia Festival. And the Begonia Festival 
nautical parade, as Dave pointed out, started, the building started in on Friday, and we weren't finished cleaning up until Tuesday. And it was immensely an impact on the creek. It was a, it was a, 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 an impact that the community embraced because of the tradition and the beauty. But the pro proposal that's before you tonight is this big. And it's very deliberately this big. And I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Next. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the council. And I am um, going to let the council have a ray with it and minimize my comments to none because I'm a participant in the committee. And although the, the city attorney has assured me that I'm not violating anything by voting, I think I would be um, violating my integrity by promoting things one way or the other with my rhetoric. So. I'll start with Councilmember Bottorf. Um, I think a lot of effort has been put uh, on by everybody involved. I, I was originally a very um, suspect of this event, and I had concerns mostly because of liability uh, of, of on the river. Uh, the number one thing we have to provide here is the city council is safety for all of our residents. And um, I, I appreciate the efforts that have been made to minimize the impact on the residents. I know that a lot of the residents have said that they're they're all full on begonias and I, they thought they put the begonia festival to bed but you know I, I'm willing to give this a chance I think it could be a good event I think they've that, that a lot of concessions have been made to make it what appears to be me safer I do have one little caveat just uh, just because it's nighttime and because uh, who knows what can happen I would like to just include as part of the requirements for the barges that there be at least two buoyancy devices on every barge Excellent point. Kristen. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the committee that uh, has put in the time and, and effort to create this new event in, um, in, in effort to replace our, our Begonia Festival. I think it's going to be fantastic, and I appreciate uh, the chief for answering the questions that I had about um, safety and, and getting people off of the river walk at a reasonable time. Um, otherwise, I think it's going to be fantastic. Was that a motion that you made, or were you adding to a I just made a request. I didn't a make request. a motion. Go ahead, you can go ahead and make a motion. Oh, oh, really? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Well, in that case, um, I will make a motion then to uh, approve the special event permit, including an encroachment permit, amplified sound permit, and banner permit for the proposed Capitola Beach Festival, um, and to request that they include buoyan two buoyancy devices on each float. PFDs. I'm sorry? PFDs. PFDs. Second. Sure. Yeah. All right. John. You know, I, I, I don't think I can add any, anything more. And uh, I'm very, uh, that is a first. But he's but not done. I'm, but I'm not done. And I think it's because I think our chief and Dave has also followed up with some good ideas that I hadn't heard about, have already figured out all the things that we need to address. Um, but I think um, from talking to some residents, we got a year list show it's a good thing because some people are saying, no, I want to see what it's like. And so they were sort of on the fence. Um, so I really appreciate the planning, the work that's gone into this. Thank you. Stephanie. I'm going to uh, not support the, mo the motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a second? Yeah. To Chris's yes. 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 Uh, take a roll call vote, please. Council Member Harlan? No. Council Member B Bertrand? Aye. Council Member Peterson? Aye. Council Member Bottorf? Aye. Mayor Chairman? Aye. Motion passes four to one. You're recused. No, I wasn't I'm recused. Kidding. I was staying uncharacteristically silent. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe um, Chairman, just clarification. Uh, I did have a sphere uh, done on my location, and I'm outside the effect of the uh, <laughs> of the uh, festival. So if Very there good. was any question. It doesn't stop you from building a float. Just want to let you know that. Just want to know okay. that I did look into that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's go on to but consider a resolution okay. on the levy of a Capitola Village and Wharf Business Improvement Area Assessment for fiscal year 2018 and 19. Staff report, please. Ah. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you mentioned, uh, this next item before you is the annual levy of the Capitola Vi Village Wharf and Business Improvement Area Assessments, or BIA. Um, 
back on May 24th, you adopted a resolution setting a public hearing today. So we're going to, uh, the request is to conduct a public hearing and consider the levy for 2019, as well as approving the business plan and budget for fiscal year 19 for the BIA. Just as a reminder, the BIA assessments are paid by the businesses within that area, and the intent is to promote business within the Capitola Village, and any costs incurred by the city are reimbursed through the assessments. Um, at the conclusion of the public hearing, assuming that there's not more than 50% protests, the staff recommendation is to authorize the levy of the assessments and approve the business plan and budget. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have, and Karin Heine is also here from the business improvement area. Excellent. Any questions of staff? Questions of Karin? I do. Oh, you have a question of staff or of Karin? Karin. Karin, come on up. Good, Good evening, evening. Karin. Um, you know, when I ever look at the fee schedule, I'm just wow, this is just an amazing piece of work. And the reason why I ask is because, you know, it's not just a fee, it's like in lieu and, and you know, there must be a story behind how this all came together. And I was just wondering if you could comment on that. If you don't, fine, but it's, it's always made me, how did the BIA come up with how to make this all work? Well, actually, um, I was not on the formation committee because I didn't think it would ever work. <laughs> And I said, I'm just, I'll be over here okay. running my business. And when you guys get through doing all this crap over here, okay. you let me know because I'd be glad to help and I'm supportive. But there, there were, you know, tons of meetings. Do we do it by square footage? Do we do this? Do we do that? How do we structure it? And um, uh, the people, you know, unfortunately, most all the people who were in that formation committee are all not in business at the moment, and several of them are no longer with us at all. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, there's a lot of fuzzy recollection about how it all really happened. The in lieu um, fee with the gift certificates that came as um, in the first after the first year formation or during that first year, where you know we really felt that. Um, it was a good promotion device, and it helped uh, reduce the actual out-of-pocket expense of the businesses. So that's how that came about. And you know, it's just been you know 13 years of trial and error. We had a VIP card for a while that that people could get, and then they would get discounts at certain businesses. You know, we've done different, tried different things. Some of them worked, some of them did not. And um, I think we're on a, a good path now. This next year, we're going to uh, work heavily with social media because that is the way people are finding out on their computers and on their mobile devices where they want to go on vacation, what they want to do when they get there. I think we've all experienced that by now. And um, uh, this actually is less expensive in a lot of cases than print, so our money will go farther. Mm -hmm. um, we can do better analytics when you put out some print. You don't, you don't know who's reading it. You don't know how long they're keeping it necessarily. I mean, the print people do studies, but when you do it uh, with the analytics on the internet, you can get some pretty good details. And we have a new advertising agency in the village um, called Yellow Bus. It's been around for a long time. They've won a lot of awards. They do the boardwalk. They do a lot of big properties. And um, they, they're members, they're helping us. And I think it's going to really uh, make a huge difference in what we're able to do with our money as far as promoting um, on the internet, which is, again, once you have your website established and certain other things, it's, it can be very inexpensive and your reach can be very wide and very targeted. So that's what, we, that's what we're trying to do for this next year. Um, so we're just, you know, we're, as I said, we're always fine tuning it, moving forward, looking at different holiday type events, decorations, more permanent things. We're still talking about permanently lighting the palm trees. That is oh. definitely still in, in the works. Ed's been really helpful on, on that and Mike's been helpful on that because they both are, you know, have some expertise. So I think that might happen, actually happen before next, next Christmas, I'm hoping, I don't know. So that's it. Cool background. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Karin. Any other questions? We'll open this up to the public. Anyone who would like to address the council? 
Seeing none, we'll bring it back. Is there a motion? I have a comment. Comment? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve staff, or staff sure. recommendation, but I just, uh, I'll wait for Christmas. Motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. Thank you. Uh, the one comment I want to make is that um, I, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm working with the BIA on another project right now that I'm hoping uh, is fruitful, and um, my hope is to bring it back at the meeting on the 28th and make a presentation to the council, have some preliminary discussions with some members of the BIA, and I, I think that we had a uh, strenuous relationship maybe a couple years ago, which better now, and I'm hoping that maybe this one will push us way over the finish line to a almost kumbaya relationship. I'm just looking forward to a more flattering caricature. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone else like to comment? No, I can't. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll move on to introduction of an ordinance amending Chapter 5.24 of the Capitol Municipal Code pertaining to entertainment permits. And we get the pleasure of having the chief with us once again. Mayor Germany, members of the council, as you mentioned uh, before you this evening is an amendment to Chapter 524, which uh, governs the issuance of entertainment permits here in the city of Capitola. It's not an introduction of a new code at all, uh, but rather, and it's not a change in our current protocol or process that has been in place for many years. Simply stated, there's some cleanup language uh, that is recommended, and it's really codifying an agreement uh, that the council brought forward um, or, or um, um, authorized uh, back in 2005. So chapter 524 is the authority to regulate and of course the issuance of permits uh, and conditions are the, are the contract between staff, uh, the city and the permittee. We have three types of entertainment permits. Uh, single entertainment permits are for activities that occur within a seven day period. We have none of those currently and had none last year. Uh, minor entertainment permits, uh, entertainment that is incidental to the primary business such as a jukebox. We have five currently uh, of those uh, permits issued. And then four currently regular permits, uh, which is an entertainment uh, industry that offers entertainment um, as an attraction in addition to the business itself. Um, and so this uh, amendment to 524 will codify, uh, as I mentioned, the process that was agreed upon back in 2005. Uh, a couple of things, uh, recognizing the renewal of entertainment permits uh, at the staff level. Uh, new regular entertainment permits would come before council as a presentation for your discretion. Established uh, conditions that are consistent with each of the three permits, single, um, uh, regular, and um, the middle one, minor. Uh, and then, of course, appeal rights that are established within the mini code in Chapter 252 for those permittees whose conditions might have been changed or a permit is revoked. Another piece of this amendment is removing the sidewalk cleaning language that's currently in the, in the code um, uh, and a recommendation to remove that language uh, because of a mandate uh, due to water quality that we're familiar with and, and water regulations uh, in addition to the city's current cleaning sidewalk cleaning schedule uh, that is placed in the village. Uh, that is my very short presentation. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Questions? We have none. We'll open it up to the public. Anyone who would like to address us on this matter? Seeing none, we'll bring it back. What is the pleasure of the council? My concern about the sidewalk cleaning. So if because of your permit. Um, city manager, if you ask him, he I'm probably sorry. could. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. So I just have concern of that. So you have a permit for some entertainment and it creates a big mess. Um, why shouldn't the, the business or whoever had the permit clean that up? Uh, Councilmember Bertrand, so, so this, there's a very long history behind the sidewalk cleaning and the associated relationship between the entertainment permits. Um, frankly, the language in the code wasn't the process we were implementing. And you'll recall through the negotiations with the, the BIA, the last time we were talking about, I believe it was measure F. Mm -hmm. The city had been in negotiations with about the BIA about paying for more sidewalk cleaning. And at that point, we agreed to take on the sidewalk cleaning in our budget. Um, so we have an extensive sidewalk cleaning program now by the city. In addition, back when this was originally written, you could walk out with a hose and spray down your sidewalk every morning before work, right? 
and that's not between SoCal Creek Water District and stormwater regs and everything else. That's just not allowed anymore. So you need sort of a, a, a almost a no, I've seen them. Yeah, a specialized Capture contractor or a municipal device to do the sidewalk cleaning. So it, it just it didn't feel like it made sense anymore. Okay, so I. Uh, the reason why I asked was because I thought this was sort of like an individual thing. You know, someone does something, whatever it is, it causes a nuisance on the sidewalk or some sort of that effect. No, no, the, 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 the condition sidewalk. was for the, the, the recurring, recurring. Um, regular event permit holders to clean their sidewalks. So the if you have a bar or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Motion to approve staff recommendation. Is there a second? No second. That's Councilmember Bertrand. Seconding, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Remarkable work, Council, and congratulations, dedicated public servants, Ed Bottorf, Jacques Bertrand. <laughs> this is coming up on 12 hours of meetings for you. Well done. The citizens should be proud of you. We're lucky you're here. I'm glad I'm not on the RTC, and um, good night, Capitola.